How's it going, Gray Boys? It is still playoff season for us. We were unexpectedly picked as the seventh seed in the college football playoff this year. And then unexpectedly, we came up and beat our in-state opponents in the number two Michigan Wolverines. And now it's time to take a look at who we will be facing in the semifinal round. We need to sim through the three other quarterfinal games. Uh, the first is between our one seed and our eight seed with USC and Oklahoma State in the Rose Bowl. Obviously, you're expecting USC to win this, but you never know with these games. And it is USC winning at the Trojans. Take it 49 to 35, a pretty high scoring game. Oklahoma State. Uh, like us, probably didn't belong in the playoffs, but that uh, I think that they won the Big 12, so uh, they earned that spot technically, even though they were 8-4. and four. Uh, USC moves to 13-1, and one, and we'll face off between the winner of Coastal and Cal. Obviously, we'd like the Teal Boys to win this one. Uh, just the, the scenes, if it's Coastal. And us in the uh, national championship game. It's not to be, though. The Cal Bears win it 21-14. to And Coastal will not be able to three-peat on the national championships. And that leads us to the final uh, game of this first round. And it will decide who we match up against in the semifinals. Georgia and Georgia Tech. Another in-state game rivalry here the number nine yellow jackets and the number three bulldogs who's gonna take it on that one i think it would be easier for us to play georgia tech but it looks like we're gonna have to play the number three team in the country in georgia the bulldogs win it 41 to 24 pretty uh solid victory there they moved to 12 and 2 and that is certainly going to be difficult uh was it just a dominating win yeah they kind of held it the whole way and ended it in that fourth quarter so let's go ahead and set up that uh, semi-final round. And there we have it. Uh, a Pac-12 matchup with USC and Cal playing in the Chick-fil-A Bowl. And on the other side of the bracket, Eastern Michigan <laughs> and Georgia. I would definitely say that we are out of place here. As we'll be trying to win the Fiesta Bowl. If we could win uh, a second bowl game. Second big bowl game is especially... That would be pretty insane. So we can load back into the dynasty file here. And let's see the matchup. We're favored to win. I don't understand that. Georgia, the A plus overall. Uh, probably a 99, I would expect. Although they do have a minus six turnover differential on the season. So maybe not the best at holding on to the football. That could be good for us. And if at this point you're kind of thinking maybe this season's a little unrealistic, you got to remember, I'm not controlling the defense. Uh, we know that I'm not the best at playing defense in this game. So expect uh, a big regression next year should we get the head coaching job. And I say should because there's no guarantee that we get it. Um, you know, there's a chance that our defensive coordinator gets promoted instead of us. Georgia, their two losses on the season were to number 12 Florida where they lost that one by a touchdown 7 to 14 and then they actually lost to Georgia Tech 27 24 in the regular season before beating them in that first uh, playoff matchup this is Oklahoma State but just the way that the playoffs have to be set up uh, it puts them in as a placeholder but at the end of it all it should all look normal um goodness i'm a little bit worried about this let's get into it nothing else to take a look at really i think we're gonna go white helmet with the green pants today tempting to go with the white out but we got to throw a little bit of that uh, green in and for georgia i think that they have a playoff home yeah they've got a playoff home uniform so we'll do that as it is shaky bars for the bulldogs 99 overall with a 99 overall offense and a 93 defense. So definitely they will be expected to win this one. Georgia comes into this game uh, again with a pretty solid defense. They're not stopping the run well, uh, but they are running it well themselves and they're getting a decent amount of yards, just not quite as many points to show for it as they would hope. Uh, both of us 12 and two, nine and one in conference. Their top players though for next season, low 90s overall, again, ours for next season. And that high 70s overall, although again, all three of them on hot streaks. 
And then for injuries, uh, both teams with a right end out, questionable on the game. So I guess it's just if either team really feels that we need that extra push, we could bring him in. But I don't know if Jackson will be getting much playing time for us. So here we are at State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. Uh, we did a decent job when we were in New Orleans at the Superdome. Can we continue that here in the Fiesta Bowl against Georgia? We get to choose the coin toss, and we'll probably get to do that the entire way through. So Tails fails for us this time, and it looks like we're going to be starting with the football. It's a covered stadium, so no wind for us today, and the kickoff is taken for a touchback, which means we can just get right underway. We're going to run the ball. Giving it to Jesse Wagner up the middle right away. And it's the Georgia fans already making a lot of noise. So we get this semifinal game underway. And Wagner fighting well gets us four yards. In the first play from scrimmage. Now this is one of those games where I'm definitely scared to pass. Uh, just because we know that Georgia's defense is going to be so good. But also the more we run, the more dangerous that's going to get. Although if Wagner can just do that all game, we'll be just fine. So two carries gets us eight yards, and it's a third and two. And we're going play action on this third down, hoping to find somebody open. They're not really bringing a lot of pressure. And there's Dan Broussard. Just find some space, and we check it down to him. He gets a couple yards. It's seven-yard catch. That one moves the ball across the 40. And if miraculously we could score consistently in this game, there's a chance that we could make it to the national championship game. Jerome Simmons comes in and gets four yards on his first carry and I gotta remind you guys that we're doing really well this season but again we're not controlling the defense and I'm not good at controlling defenses in this game so we'll probably take a step back next year when I do have to play both sides of the ball we gave it to Wagner there on the counter and it didn't really work much but now third and five we're going counter again and I see the safety in the middle linebacker as the only two that could stop Jerome Simmons here from picking up that first down, getting north early, just not quite there. It was that middle linebacker. It'll be fourth and one. I'm going for this. We're going to get real risky. Fourth and one just across midfield, or really, actually not even, at the 50-yard line. Bring John Wilson in motion. We're going to go triple option, handing the ball off to Jerome Simmons, and he just barely gets there. Kind of ran into a blocker, was able to stay on his feet and get the first down. So Georgia starting to feel a little bit of the power that we can bring running the football. And on this first down, we'll go to the air. Just our first true pass. And again, checking it down, giving it to Zach Wilson. The tight end finds a lot of space there. That's 13 yards and another first down. Ed Bird completes his first two passes of the day as we'll go play action again. And this time... Waiting, throwing a dangerous one over the middle. Dan Broussard can't hold on through the contact. I might have been just a little bit too late in making that throw, but it was a decent attempt anyways. Let's see what Wagner can do. Make it a manageable third down for us. He's got a block, and Jesse Wagner has some space. 18 yards inside the red zone. This opening drive is going very well for us. That downfield blocking from the lineman was absolutely phenomenal. And that sets us up with a chance for sure to get points as long as we hold on to the ball. Jerome Simmons again running well gets four yards on that first down. So Georgia fans may be feeling a little bit stunned here as we've come out and we've started to put them up to the ropes. The question is can we land that punch in the mouth? They're bringing pressure. We'll check it down to the running back and Jesse Wagner. If I had another second that could have been a first down if not more. Instead it's third and one. And we're going to go for this through the air. I think they're going to be expecting us to pass the ball. So I would like to throw it into the end zone. Dan Broussard, Serge Mitchell, my main two targets here. And we're throwing it to Serge. He's got the curl and he can't hold on to it. It was in his hands almost all the way to the ground. But at the end, he just drops it. And how about this? Coach wants us to go for this fourth and one. At the seven yard line, I would take the field goal, but we're gonna listen to our head coach here. Give it to Wagner up the middle and Jesse Wagner has the first and goal down to the three yard line. Oh man, can we finish it off now? This looks pretty solid. Jerome Simmons coming in 
running it for the corner of the end zone, and they don't have anybody over there. So if the blocking is good, it'll be a touchdown, and Jerome Simmons goes untouched into the end zone for the first score of this semifinal matchup. That was a long drive, taking nearly the entire first quarter. And with that much effort, uh, I think we deserve to go up 7-0. Extra point is good. And now it's up to the defense to get their first stop. Touchback on the kickoff. And Georgia gets to work a five-yard carry on first down, a four-yard carry on second down. And now a chance here for the defense to get off the field with a quick three and out. Georgia obviously a 99 overall offense. You expect them to be good, and the quarterback keeps it on the read option. That was close to being bad, but it turns into a really good run as the Bulldogs cross midfield just like that. Their quarterback, Steven Ostrander, taking off that time. He's definitely a threat to run. We'll have to make sure he doesn't scramble too much. And keeping it again on the read option. That one looked almost identical. And it is almost identical. Steven Ostrander finds the downfield blocking. Absolutely phenomenal from those wide receivers. And just like that, the Bulldogs have tied this one up. Didn't seem like there was a whole lot to do there as the extra point is good. And so where it took us four and a half minutes to score, it took them... I think less than a minute as they were moving the ball. A couple of really big plays. We're going to look to throw. It looks like we tried to return this one and only got to the 10, which is certainly no good. And this one, oh, we're lucky that wasn't a pick six. Hit as we're throwing. It's incomplete. So it's now second and 10. We're going to try to go with the counter. Uh, motion over Dan Broussard. Yeah, I don't like this one bit. What if we bring Wilson over? Wilson getting that extra block could be crucial. And the block is beautiful. And the downfield blocking is as well. So the uh, the work making the motion works out for us. We get 13 yards. Pulls us away from danger quite a bit. And we're going to try our first read option of the game. We'll see if Ed Bird takes it. And he is. Some space. I'm going to let him take the contact and then slide down for a first down of his own. Ed Bird. Maybe 50% passing so far on the day, but getting it done with his legs as the first quarter is going to come to a close there. All tied up here at seven each. Uh, definitely a lot more difficult for us to score. There's a fourth down conversion involved. Uh, Georgia only took four or five plays, but we're keeping with it. If the defense can get a stop. We'll be in a decent spot. All right, we'll start this second quarter with a pass. They're not bringing a whole lot of pressure. I hit the wrong button, and I'm lucky that that one hit Serge Mitchell's hands first. So that gives us a second and 10 to work with. And again, I'm not sure this will work. We're going towards the edge with the toss play. If the blocking's there, it could be all right. The first block lands, and Wagner gets five yards out of the play. A faster back maybe could turn that into more, but for me, a toss play... Going for five yards is honestly pretty solid. We'll go to the air on third and five. Serge Mitchell in motion. Throwing it to the tight end, and Zach Wilson comes down with it. His route running has been phenomenal in the playoffs so far. And that time it keeps this drive alive. See if we can get Serge Mitchell involved in the running game. With the end around, first block gets picked up, and he cuts it north. And Mitchell's got four yards there. You definitely like to see that. Throwing a little bit of trickeration with running the wide receivers, and we might do that again here. The triple option to Dan Broussard. We've seen a lot of success with this play in these playoffs, and we're going to see a whole lot more. Dan Broussard with the pitch. So close to taking that one the distance, but still he gets 18 yards there. Ed Bird definitely taking some shots so far in this game. But it'll be worth it if we can come away with the win. Uh, Jerome Simmons on this first down will take the handoff. Just truck his way forward for six yards. And I think what we're doing well here is being pretty risk averse. Now this will be a, a, maybe a shot down field. But as long as we keep our throws safe, we could be all right. Definitely can't throw that one. But I can't throw it to Jesse Wagner. He's got the first and goal. Just staying patient. We make a little bit of a risky throw. But that time, it certainly works out. And we're at the six-yard line with a chance to get that lead back. Again, I would settle for a field goal here, but a touchdown would be even better as Jerome Simmons gets us a third of the way there. And this might be the dumbest play that we make all day. Or it could be incredibly genius. The wide receiver mid-screen 
to Nixon. Will it work out for us? Throwing it, he catches it, but with no blockers, but Nixon fights his way in. Jonathan Nixon, the four yard touchdown reception on the screen. And we take a touchdown lead again. That one didn't look like it was gonna work, but just the effort gets into the end zone. How about this extra point? It's good, we're back up seven. Decent return, actually a bad return to the 19 for Georgia and their offense can get to work. A 15 yard penalty against the defense right away puts the Bulldogs near midfield and we'll hop in to see what they can do as their offense will probably get a, get their first play of this drive off. Quarterback scrambling again. And you gotta wonder, is Steven Ostrander running well, or running a ton because he runs well or is there something else? I wonder at all if Georgia's uh, wide receivers just aren't getting open quick enough. And we will find out as this game goes on. Running back goes in motion. Ostrander scrambling again. Sheds one tackle and gets two yards. So it's a third and nine. And this will be difficult for them to convert. Now Georgia does get the ball to start the third quarter. But certainly they want to keep this one tied up. 2.20 left in the pace we've been moving at. We would probably have the final drive. That's just a ballsy handoff. But it works so well as Chris Gordon picks up the first down on the ground. See if the defense can figure it out. These uh, running backs doing well so far in that one. I think he just missed one receiver and the other one didn't expect it to come. Pass incomplete for Ostrander there. But it'll stop the clock nonetheless. 2.15. H team all three timeouts and Ostrander takes off running again. And he's just breaking tackles left and right. Steven Ostrander inside the 20 just does not want to be tackled today five carries for 95 yards for the quarterback and it's not even halftime this man is putting the team on his back but can he sustain those hits this one is screen out towards the edge some stiff arm cheese it's a broken tackle and he's almost into the end zone they take their time out he's on the one yard line if that that actually looks like a bad spot to me from the refs they should be inches away We'll see if they can pick it up. Quarterback again stepping back to throw, and he's going to get sacked for a loss of five. And now Georgia takes their second timeout. Once again, we're seeing that AI uh, clock management kind of struggling. Ostrander throws that one away just like that. It's third and goal. But for me, there's no way in real life a coach has taken those two timeouts. You don't want to give us time and our timeouts to go down the field and work with. Can they score? Back of the end zone, intercepted. The defense comes down with it. And with a minute and 49 and three timeouts, we'll have a chance to extend the lead before halftime. Now I gotta make sure that I'm not too stupid with this, but I'm looking to throw it deep on first down. Put Dan Broussard just on a slant, go underneath. And we'll see what we can do. Who's wide open? It's John Wilson, catches it in stride. And he's across midfield, 39 yards on the catch. Georgia makes a huge mistake. Our defense capitalizes on it, and now it's time for the offense to try to do the same. This is a Georgia team that came into this game minus six in the turnover differential on the season. So we're going to throw this one up and see what Nixon can do, and I'm lucky that that one isn't picked off. Even if we could just get in a field goal range, that would be fine. Still all three timeouts, so I'm not worried about the clock just yet. But we do need to pick up the first down, and we're throwing a check down to Dan Broussard. He picks up a block, and Dan Broussard has this in an interesting spot. One yard short of the line to gain, 40 seconds on the clock, and all three timeouts. I'm going to hand this one off to Jesse Wagner. Try to pick up that first down, which he just barely did. He's still on his feet. We'll take our first time out there with 33 seconds. Now, obviously, we would want the touchdown but even a field goal here could be enough to make this one really difficult for Georgia. Looks like they're going to bring pressure, and they will. And I should have thrown it to Serge Mitchell, but instead it's in the end zone for Broussard, and it's picked off. It was just overthrown. And that's the mistake that we didn't want to make. If we underthrow that pass, it's probably a touchdown. Broussard had plenty of space just to come back to the ball, but I hit the wrong button initially, and it just didn't quite work out. Georgia will see if they actually push for this. Three yards on first down. 15 seconds left. And no, it looks like they're willing just to let the clock burn out. I think that's a mistake. I think they should have gone for it. But we can walk into the locker rooms up a touchdown at halftime. 
in this semifinal game against the number three team in the country. The Cinderella story is certainly continuing tonight. But we have another half to play, so what can we do to change things up? Offensively, we're doing all right. I need to probably make smarter passes. We can't have another interception, that's for sure. And I'm happy with the way the defense has played. They've given up big plays, but uh, that big interception in the red zone and just holding them uh, to seven points and a half is absolutely fantastic. So we'll see this second half get underway. Georgia, a returnable kickoff for them. Hopefully the kick team's good, and that takes a pretty solid. Just letting them get past the 25. And now we'll see what they can do. First down. Uh, it's a loss of three by the running backs. So the defense getting some pressure. 12-yard pass on that gives them another first down. No, they say it's third and inches. I guess the, the loss of yards was enough, so a big, big chance now for the defense. Obviously, inches should be easy for this George offense to get as they hand it off, and they'll, that'll be easy indeed. <laughs> a 15-yard carry for Gabriel Walker. That'll move him across midfield. Uh, the defense will get there eventually, and again, every once in a while, they get those stops. It's just not quite consistent enough, so they're not really getting those three and outs. But if you string a couple stops together, it could be big, and this looks huge. A stop for a loss of three, and it makes a third and 11 for the Bulldogs now. If Georgia doesn't score on this opening drive of the second half, things could get ugly for them really quick. This one's thrown short of the line again, but a tackle's broken, and it's a foot race to the end zone. The stiff arm, not enough to get into the end zone, and Chris Ferguson gets knocked out of bounds, but it's first and goal just like that. Certainly our tackling has caused some big issues in this game. From the four-yard line, George is just going to go with the option. The pitch is good, and Chris Gordon goes untouched into the end zone. So just like that, they go from third and 11 to into the end zone, and we are all tied up here. And it's pretty even as well. Uh, 216 total yards for us and 210 for them. Question is... Can we add a few more and maybe a few more points on this drive as well? The counter is okay to Wagner. He breaks the first tackle, but then gets taken down before he can make much of it. Going to try to pass on second and seven. This pass hasn't been great for us. We're just going to check it down and give it to the, uh, the do-it-all guy on the team. Jesse Wagner, he's got us in a third and one. Jerome Simmons will come in for this big play. Up the middle he goes. Plenty of space created by the line. That's a, a new set of downs for us. Again, looking to pass. Broussard going deep. Probably don't expect much from that. But we can... Oh, we almost had somebody over the middle, I think. It's a nine-yard sack instead. I just was paying too much attention to what the safeties were doing. Didn't see the pressure was almost on us. And this is going to be a tough one to convert. Second and 19. We don't have to get it all on this play, although... It certainly would help, and oh no, a strip sack picked up by the defense, and Georgia takes it into the end zone and takes their first lead of the game midway through this third quarter. Again, just looking downfield, didn't see the pressure coming. Couldn't get rid of it in time. So just another one of those costly turnovers added on to the day. Is It just seems like it's adding up. Ed Bird gets hit in the backfield for a loss of three. It's starting to feel like Georgia maybe has made the adjustments and their talent is starting to win out. It's second and 13. Stepping back to throw again. This is a tough one. Wilson's going to come down with it, though. And he doesn't get the spot third in inches. The refs aren't quite on our side there, so we'll hope to pick up a first down here, but you never know. Simmons gets it just enough. Well, let's try to go back to basics. Running the football was working really well earlier in the game. Maybe it will continue to. And yeah, that's exactly what we want to see. Jesse Wagner absorbing some contact and almost picking up another first down. Bring uh, Serge Mitchell in motion once again. The end around worked pretty well the first time. It's going to work well enough to move the chains and get us across midfield this time. I'm not necessarily expecting those plays to go for a lot, but... 
Yeah, any, any little amount helps. And now we're going to go jet sweep with Ernest Bennett. Hope that he can get some good blocks. There's a little bit of a hole. And look at that, Ernest Bennett, the big guy. 13 yards on that one. I wouldn't necessarily call him a speedster, but he just gets moving and finds a gap. And now we're across the 40, looking for the double screen. We're going to go to the running back. <laughs> I didn't mean to spin. Jerome Simmons loses six yards on that one. Well, this isn't the first time that we've had a second and long on this drive. 16 yards to go to pick up the first down. We'll see what's going to happen as we will step back to throw. Just got to make sure that we don't take a big shot. And the running back, a risky one, but he comes down with it through the contact for the first down. That one probably could have been picked off, but it definitely shouldn't have been held on to especially from a running back who's not necessarily known for his good at uh, ball catching abilities. And that's enough to bring our third quarter to a close. So it's still a game as we head into the fourth quarter. Down a touchdown, but driving currently. If we can score early in this fourth quarter and either the defense gets a stop or they give up a touchdown early, we could have a chance to send this one to overtime as well. But it's the clutch skill being activated for Georgia. Is it going to be enough for them? Second and eight. We're going to go with a play action rollout outside the pocket. Zach Wilson's wide open. And he's got the first and goal on the first play of this final quarter. That's four catches on the day for the tight end. We're going to make a, a risky decision here. We're going with the toss. And I didn't get the toss off. I was honestly trying to. It probably would have been a fumble. I'm going to be happy with the two yards we got. Second and goal now. Jerome Simmons again getting the carry. Wagner's stamina must be mostly depleted. It's, he's not getting a lot of running. Jerome is, though. He's got us that much closer. It's third and goal from the two. Or maybe I should say the one or even the half yard. One foot line somewhere in there. You know what it's time for. The old Drewski special. Give it to Courtney Smith and the fullback up the middle. Can't get it. Just got back to the line of scrimmage. That looked like it should have been so easy. That brings up a fourth and goal, and we're going for it again. The fullback dive. Can we tie this one up? Smith gets into the end zone just barely. He's met as he crosses the plane. And pending this extra point, we could be all tied up at 21 apiece in the fourth quarter. Looking for a spot in that national championship game. So what is it that this defense can do? 4.23 left for Georgia. We know they've moved the ball quickly. This one a handoff and another kind of broken tackle. Gabriel Walker gates eight yards there. And Georgia's kind of going with the opposite uh, game plan here that I would. They're in their hurry up. So maybe for some reason a little bit worried about time. The screen loses them two yards. And it's third and five. Who knows, maybe being conscious of the clock and going quick there was a good idea because if they don't convert this, they could be in a lot of trouble. Quarterback designed to run and he's not going to get there. Stuffed at the line of scrimmage. It's fourth and six. And we'll see them punt this one away. The question is, can we get a good return? A field goal would be enough to put us into the lead but with three and a half minutes. Will we have enough time? And can the offense move? We've got good starting field position from the 39-yard line. No way did I expect to be competitive in this game, uh, let alone be, a, be there with a chance to win it late in the fourth quarter. Wagner comes back in for the first carry of the drive, and he's got five yards. And with just three minutes to play, George has got to be sweating a little bit. Play action, and we take the sack. No help from the offensive line there. That's a loss of four, and it'll be third and ten. A three and out would be almost disastrous here, but we can hope for the best. Trying to go to the air. A looked like they were open. Y is open. Broussard catches it, but he's short of the line to gain. Fourth and one. 226 I'm letting coach make the decision and he's gonna punt this one away and I don't even think he's gonna burn the clock here so this one snapped kicked away and Georgia with a chance to field it here 
So decent field position up to about the 27 with 209 left on the clock. Part of me really thinks that we should have gone for it. And part of me doesn't think that our defense can get the stop again, but they start fantastically. First down, it's a loss of two as Georgia's running game just can't get going. It's important to remember that we still come in with the nation's leading rush defense by the numbers. And it seems to be showing late in the game here. Looks like they're going to hand it off again. Plenty of space up the middle that time. And they get spotted the first down. That seemed generous to me. Gabriel Walker there with his ninth carry of the day. He's averaging five as Ostrander takes off. I, these look like designed quarterback runs, but they just are not working. One and a half minutes left on the clock. Are they going to start to pass more? Scrambling. Ostrander isn't going to have anything doing. There's just nothing there. Wade Benjamin brings him down. And again with the clock moving, it's third and six. Uh, with a minute and 10 left, they do have all of their timeouts, as do we. The receivers taking a long time to get back. And this is huge. A minute and four on the clock. Stepping back to throw the screen. That's going to be a first down. And they are nearing field goal range as they cross the 45. At what point does our coach decide to start taking timeouts? 59 seconds for the Bulldogs. Stepping back, quarterback scrambles once again. He's not going to get the blocks that he wants. And it's Wade Benjamin again, making sure that he only gets four yards. The clock just continues to tick away down to 40 seconds as Georgia not wanting to snap the ball. It's surprising that we haven't really seen any penalties in this game. And I think maybe they think they're in field goal range. They're burning the clock down. Could we see them just center this one up and try to kick a game winner? Offense all looks completely gassed on their side. Heavy breathing as they will run this one down and then step back to throw. Quarterback scrambling, and he's going to get the third and inches, and there's the first time out with 11 seconds for Georgia. And that almost certainly puts them in field goal range if they have a good kicker, plus the light of fire skill activated there. If the defense could create a turnover, we could get into overtime or perhaps get the win here in regulation, but certainly we're not expecting it. This one just run up the middle, and that is game as far as I'm concerned. Six seconds on the clock, and Georgia takes their second timeout, and oh, this could be a big mistake. They're going to go and run the football once again, looking for everything. Two seconds, and there's the final timeout. They got closer. They're not centered up. This isn't guaranteed. Our coach probably not going to ice this kicker. And his clock expires on this field goal attempt. Will we still be alive? The kick is up and it is good. So Georgia walks off with a field goal. And the Cinderella story comes to a heartbreaking end. We won the Sugar Bowl. We can't win the Fiesta Bowl. Play of the game for Georgia. The strip sack, scoop and score touchdown. Oh, so brutal. We lose the turnover battle as a result of that play, and we lose the game as a result of that play. Hard fought. Just wasn't meant to be this year, but we will be back in these playoffs. Maybe not next year, but certainly in the future. This team uh, has a lot of, of bright spots ahead of it. We'll just hope that uh, getting this far will help us in recruiting and well, honestly, I got to hope that we just get the head coaching job because it's not guaranteed that they're going to hire us. So at the end of it, 24 to 21, the Bulldogs walk out with the victory. Uh, we can leave with our heads held high, though, because we definitely played these guys very well. Well, at some point, we had to wake up from the dream. Uh, we weren't supposed to make the playoff. We weren't supposed to make the second round. Uh, and obviously, we weren't supposed to make it to the championship game. We played one heck of a good game, though. Uh, we put up decent numbers. We held them to 89 passing yards, but we did give up 188 on the ground, and then losing the turnover battle certainly hurts. It's that third quarter, I think, that really kills us. We lost that 14 to nothing, and then just couldn't hold on in the fourth. I think maybe things could have been different if Coach... Had used the timeouts, uh, but, you know, next year, if we're in charge, we can make those decisions. Players of the game for us on offense is Jerome Simmons, the backup running back, 11 carries for 40 yards and a touchdown. 
And on defense, it's Lorenzo Henry, the man with the interception at the end of the half. And he also had a sack to put on top of that. So definitely worth it for him. Well, I'm definitely disappointed that we lost. But the good news is the next game that we play almost certainly will be a home game, which means that finally we can see the gray field. Before we do that, though, let's take a look at this Pac-12 semifinal matchup between Cal and USC. Let's see who wins the Peach Bowl and will be playing Georgia in the national championship. I didn't get a good look. Uh, and it looks like it's USC, a close one, 35 to 31. The Trojans beat the Bears and it's going to be number one versus number three in that national championship game. Both teams seem honestly really, really solid. And how did this go? A USC comeback in the fourth quarter to win it. Uh, Cal had the lead into the fourth and probably threw a decent amount of the fourth there, I would imagine. But they just happened to fall short. But at least we can say that among the top four teams in the country, we probably belong with them. Uh, we beat number two. We held our own against number three. And I would think that most Eastern Michigan fans would take this season again in a heartbeat, even if it means we don't win the national championship. The only hope is that with me at the helm of both the offense and defense next year, uh, is that just that we can remain competitive. Definitely we'll slide back, but hopefully it's not too bad. Unfortunately, that's going to have to do it for this episode. We'll see who wins the national championship as well as probably go through the entire off season in our next video. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to hit the like button. I think it would be worth it for the season that we had. We finished 12 and three, and depending on how the polls shape up, we could finish in the top 10. Once you've done that, go ahead and hit subscribe and then head down to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter uh, our community discord and the college football revamped mod if you're trying to get it for yourself all that being said though thank you guys so much for watching my name is goonmaster you guys are the gray boys wherever you are have a good night or have a good morning we'll see you later adios